How's it going, everybody? We're back at the OG old school Tidman bench. Just been in the mood lately. In this video, we have some issues um, with Hogan's saw. I put this carburetor, I, I built a carburetor for this saw. I took the 390 carburetor off of it. I'm of the mind now, and 100% I'm of the mind, that those 390 carbs are no good on these saws. Um, the reason why, and I'm 90. 8% sure the stroke is too short therefore you don't get enough impulse to make them pump properly and you don't get enough vacuum well 390 carbs are pretty monstrous so um so I took it off a year ago I would have told you or a year and a half ago I would have told you a 390 carb was the cat's meow now that we've tested them and played with them I don't think that's the way to go unless you were going to do something even crazier than what this saw is capable of um, so I built this carburetor. There's a bunch of slop in the linkage here. The hole through here is all worn out. So I'm going to pull this carb off on the bench. I'll go to the other bench where it's nice and bright. Let's replace the linkage on this carb and fix it. Then we'll put it back on and then let's see if this still is sticking. Because something's going on here, friends. Look. I can't have that. So let's go to the other bench, then we'll put it back on and let's see if it's still sticking. This is the carb for Hogan saw that I built. Okay. This is a 224A Tillotson. So this is a 266 carb. Now, I want to show you guys something here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay. So these have a throttle linkage that clicks into here. Now this throttle linkage is the right size. This hole is just out around, okay? It's it's worn pretty bad. Now part of it is this this carb's just old, but so what's actually happening, friends, when I pull the trigger on this, it's going click, 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 click. And once in a while the trigger is actually kind of sticking on this saw. Now 99.9% .9 of the time. It's fine, but that 1% where it's a little sticky, I don't like that, friends. So I'm going to get down in here, and I'm going to take the throttle shaft out of this uh, out of this carb, and I'm going to put it in this one, okay? Um, otherwise, it's driving me nuts. That's just the way I am. I can't. You can see the difference. Big hole, little hole, okay? There still is a little bit of play, but it doesn't move as bad, whereas on this one... On this one, it it's clunk, 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 okay? And that throws off the mechanics. I tried bending the linkage a little bit and doing all kinds of different things to it, but it's just not going to work. I've tried several linkages. I can't leave it like that. And again, Freds, this is part of my process of what I do when I build a saw. So I'm going to sit down on the other side and let's pull this apart and fix this. So here's our new carb. First thing I'm going to do is take this screw out. Make sure these are tight when you put them back in or guess where they go into the motor. Okay, then I can push this over. Okay. <clears throat> push that sir clip off. Okay, and then reach into here. Sometimes you got to put tension on it and pull out the butterfly. Okay, there you go. Now slide this whole assembly out. There is spring tension on it. You will have to wind the spring. Okay. Now I'm just going to wipe this shaft down and make sure there's no dirt on it. Now same thing with this one. Now, I'm hoping the slit is big enough in this shaft. Or I'm going to have to keep looking and see if I can build another one. The other thing you could do is weld the hole shut and re-drill it. I've done that before. That's a little bit more work. I'd rather just do it this way. But Okay, let's pull this clip off here. Try not to make it fly across the shop. There we go. Okay, same thing. Pull this out. Unwind this and slide it out. 
Now, you guys, there's the difference in size between the original 266 and the later one. It's not much of a difference, but believe it, that much is the difference that it makes. Like, a few millimeters, friends, will totally make a saw run different. It doesn't take much. The inverse of that is if you go too far, if you go way too far, you end up, you know, killing the potential of the saw. Okay, so now take our carburetor right here. Slide this back in. Now I am going to have to wind this. Okay, take our butterfly. Take the butterfly and slide it back in there. It only goes in one way. Now, will this fit? That's the question. Yes, it will. Okay. It's, getting, it's a little touchy in here. Okay, I'm gonna have to pause you guys. I gotta, I gotta check to make sure that that's gonna fit. Okay, it fits just fine. I just have to put it in there straight. There we go. Okay. And I've already wound the spring. It hooks behind here and there. You guys see that? Okay, sorry. I, uh, I put the wrong spring in. I had to change the spring from the old shaft and put it on the new shaft. Because there are differences in the carb bodies, believe it or not. They made these HS carbs for so long. There you go. You see that? Okay, good spring tension. See this spring? This spring hooks down here. See that? It hooks right in here. The other one hooked on the back here. So a uh, couple differences. You guys can see the carb right here. That sticks out further than this one. Okay. So I'll put the screw back in and that should fix our problem. I've remounted the carb, two bolts, one here, gasket, intake, another gasket. There's no gasket in between the air horn in here. <laughs> First go. Look, this thing doesn't do it all the time. Now it seems to be there's some relation. See this friends? If you push this down too far, look. So, there's two things I can do with this. I have a feeling that this thing's probably worn in between here and there, and this is actually sticking out too much now, but then I think to myself, that wouldn't change anything. Now, I could just take a file and take this down lower so that you can never push it far enough for it to jam. But honestly, I don't think that's the issue. I bet you we're gonna find there's a, there's a tail that comes down here and that hooks into the, to the trigger. We're probably going to find there's some wear on there or maybe a burr. I don't know, but uh, let's have a look. See, I was hoping that new linkage would fix it. It's, it feels smoother now. And again, friends, if you're going to jack the compression on these and, and lower the cylinder, right? Think about it. So when you drop this cylinder, okay, friends, look how close that is to the flywheel. If I went another you know, 50 thousands more saying you could, there's plenty of meat there and enough intake timing to do it. You're going to start rubbing the flywheel. Also, this piece is not going to fit anymore. It's going to be too loose um, or going to be too tight. And you're going to have to grind that bottom groove and you're going to end up, this piece doesn't fit then. So now you're sucking hot air off the, uh, off the cylinder. And then friends, the cylinder bolts, the, see how there's four screws here? Well, these tillies have four screws on the bottom. Those bolts start hitting um, once you drop the cylinder too much. So now you're filing the bolts down or the screws on the bottom so they don't hit. Then this air horn, friends, you end up having to grind this down. Um, and then this, this uh, throttle linkage here will end up hitting your air horn, right? This one's just barely touching, but that's fine because we're we're uh, we're at idle, right? It won't go back any farther. 
And then your air filter starts rubbing on this really bad. So now you're heating this and bending it and making a new linkage. I've done it all like that, friends. Like all that kind of stuff I've done. But if you're going to build these, just be aware of that. They're not plug and play when you start doing heavy machine work. I did do machine work to the cylinder, but just enough to make it go fast, but not so much to have tons of issues. Okay, let's start pulling this handle apart. Brought you guys in nice and close. I've had many emails about these handles. They can be no fun. They can be really hard to take apart. Okay. First thing, make sure the roll pin isn't bent. Well, this one's a little bit bent. We're going to have to try and straighten that or find another one. Um, these can be a bear to straighten. Now, okay, I'm going to have to take this one out too. Now, there is a spring in here, friends. The spring goes around this. This is also the stopper, so... Um, not the funnest thing to take apart. I'll try and get it on video. Now, 99% of the time with these, they're just full of mung, right? There we go. See that? Okay. See this spring? It goes in there like that. It bottoms out on the bottom of the handle. And then this spring goes in here. Okay. Sits like that. There you go. Okay. In the handle. You guys can see that through there. Now, first things first, the amount of crud in here is epic. Look at that. You guys see in there? Okay. And again, this is a logger saw. This was probably a logger saw before Hogan owned it. But here's the question, friends. Before we do any more, any cleaning, And sometimes you gotta bend this way, which I'm doing right now. There you go. So there is 100% no issues with this throttle like this, okay? I can't make it jam in any way, so. Also, when I set these up, I like a lot of slop in there because when you run a long bar on these, look, they compress. And if they're too tight there, guess what happens? The throttle goes up. So little tips and tricks that I do. So basically what I'm gonna do with this is uh, just looking at the throttle surfaces. So I'm gonna blow this out and see if we can get a better look in there. Look at that. Shiny, clean, and new in there. Now, the question is, is can I put this back together and does it run better now? What ends up happening is, often, is these parts get really worn and they bind. See that hook there? See that? I think it's, I think it's catching on there. So I'll probably take like a stone and, or some 600 grit and I will polish all the surfaces on this, even though they are plastic. I'll polish them and put them back together. Almost every one of these saws has some kind of trigger problem. Okay, I'll just shine this up a bit. Okay, I took some scotch Bright. I don't know if you guys could see. Just polished it up. There were some big grooves worn into here. Now, what I'm gonna do is I wanna lube these surfaces. So I'm gonna get some grease and apply grease to the mating surfaces. Okay, so basically the deal with this is this hook, okay? This hook hooks into a hook up there on top of the trigger. So that's your fast idle on these, right? You pull the trigger up, pull that thumb, pull your thumb back, right? And it mates the two surfaces. Um, kind of, it's kind of like a sear in an old like flintlock or something. Not that I'd know anything about that. But. Um, okay, so basically what I got to do, and I'm going to move you guys over here so that hopefully you guys can see me do this. I have been asked how to put these back together a million times and, uh, it is not fun ever. It's always, uh, it's always a daunting task. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of grease where those two parts mesh. 
Okay. I will grease these pins as they go back in. Okay. Now, let's see if I can do this on video. Okay, so take this, slide it in. Okay, hold it up. Okay, you guys follow me? Hold it up like this. Okay. Now, I remember, tap this in until it gets going. Let me see if I can get you guys down low enough. Hold on, friends. Okay, see? You guys can see right in there. See how the pin is sticking in right there? Okay, I'm going to keep topping it. Okay, there it is right there. So, you guys can see the deal there. Now, grab this. While looking in there, hook the loop around and tap that in. Okay, now hold this in the right position. There we go. It's been a while, friends. I haven't done one of these. In... Okay. Now the question is though, did we fix anything or did we make it worse? Well, look at that. It feels like a different handle now. I can't even, I can't even explain to you guys how much better this feels. Like it, it was gritty and, so now look, I can, if you push that down too far, of course it's gonna bind. I think we got it, I really do. And all that good grease on there. This actually had some tension before. I mean, there's a spring under it, but if I really squeeze it, it gets stuck. But it's like before, it would just get stuck on its own. Yeah, I, I think we're in business now. Okay, there's your fast idle. Okay, so that works. Most of the time, it's the fast idle that doesn't work because that little tab's broken off. Well, I think we're in business here. I think I'm gonna leave it like that. Okay, friends, me being me, I just throttled and unthrottled it 647 times. It seems to be better now. We'll see, friends. I'll run this thing, and with with the full intention, if this throttle starts pinning or, you know, if it starts sticking, I'll know to shut it off. And now with a kill switch that works, you can actually do that. So. There we go. Let's fire this thing up and just see. I'm curious now to see. One more thing, friends. Once again, if you're gonna do machine work on these, it can cause issues. I'll give him the double stack, two of these. Oh, we got a little schmutz in there. We don't like that, do we? No. There we go. Okay, give her the old, the old double high-rise uh, intake gasket. I like showing you guys this stuff because it gives you an idea of what you're in for. Or if you're getting somebody to port one of these, you can kind of understand how much work it is. It, they're, they're not the hardest saw to port. They're, they, they're not the hardest saw to assemble, but it's like there's things you got to do or you're going to have issues. There we go. Look, now it's not, now it's not binding. Okay, there you go. Let's put the top cover on. Spark plug's tight. Let's fire this thing up and see, see if the, uh, see if the throttle works good or not. Let's see what it sounds like with this ported muffler. Is it any snappier? Just a nice saw. I'd be, 
I'd be more than happy to rock this day in and day out. It's a very, very nice saw. It makes me want to do another one for me, actually. <laughs> Which I probably will coming up, because I'm in 266 mode. I just got to put some fuel in this saw, friends. Uh, I know it's empty. Because I've been running it and idling it for a bit. And it ran out of fuel the other day. Okay, give me a second. Okay, put a half a tank, 45 to 1. Uh, this is 92 octane from Shell. No, no ethanol. I do run ethanol fuel in my in my saws often, friends, because often that's all I can get. So, okay, let's fire this thing up and see how everything works. Okay, kill switch. Kill switch on, full choke. Sometimes even like at half throttle. I don't want to pin this thing because it's not warmed up yet. Okay, kill switch works now. Oh, that's a nice kill switch. It's like very firm. Okay, I want my sauce to start one pull. Take them into the woods. So right there, you guys will see us turning them upside down just to check for air leaks. When a saw is new uh, in the first firing video, sometimes they'll change their tune. Remember, friends, it takes a while to burn the oil out, out of the uh, out of the motor. Um, this one took quite a bit, and it's still a little bit smoky. There's still some residual oil inside the motor from assembly. So your first tank with these, get them so that they run. And they're not super lean and they'll idle good enough and give you decent trigger response and just run them um, I idle mine for about a half a tank to a tank I just let them sit and run um, and then just run them they will run better and better as you put some time on them I find remember new bearings in this seals gaskets piston ring cylinder it's basically a brand new saw friend so you have to treat it accordingly <laughs> Okay, friends. Well, I think we're done. 
I can't think of anything else that needs to be done to this stuff. It needs a pipe. Um, I'll probably give it a new recoil rope for all the time that takes. I should have just done that now, but I want to run this thing and put some miles on it before it gets too cold. In the next couple months, friends, I don't run saws that often because there's too much snow and it's just too cold. So I'm going to get some time on this and get it sent back out to Hogan. And then we can move on to new projects. You guys see the, the smoke coming out? When you get these saws right, they move a lot of air. Um, they spool up like an F1 car. These saws are super zippy. They're really nice for limbing. Um, good saw for bucking, you know, medium sized wood. And uh, they're just a great saw. They're light, they're flickable. I really like them, as you guys can probably tell. Anyhow, friends, I think we got this thing beat. It's not sticking anymore, so we'll run it accordingly. Thanks for watching. Take her easy. Later. Later, guys.